Madden NFL 24, and the wait is over for this rivalry game. It's the Baltimore Ravens and the Pittsburgh Steelers, and it comes your way next. Now the temperatures are cooling off, but the sun is still shining, and that makes for perfect football weather in the city of Pittsburgh at Akershire Stadium. Today, we've got a good one on tap in the AFC North, as it'll be the Baltimore Ravens taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Here in the Steel City, I'm Brandon Gauden, joined by my partner, Charles Davis. And Charles, it doesn't matter what year it is, who the players are that are wearing the black and gold, it is never an easy assignment to come in and win here in Pittsburgh on this field. And this team always takes on the identity of this city. They're gonna be tough physically, but they're also gonna be tough mentally. Just three head coaches in 54 years, they've established their program, they know who they are, Good luck coming in and trying to take one from the Steelers. Meanwhile, for the visiting Ravens, I think everybody seems ready to turn the page from 2022. A tough finish down the stretch. Some wacky plays in that loss to the Bengals in the wild card round. They just want to reset and come out swinging in 2023. Oh, I love how you just expressed that. You're exactly right. Reset and come out and play in Ravens football again. And look, they had some anxious moments in the offseason. Now, a sigh of relief. They have their key pieces in place. They're ready to attack. Seems like we were just starting training camp, but here we are in October, and off we go on EA Sports. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. The Ravens offense set to go to work, and it's Lamar Jackson now in his sixth NFL campaign who will lead the way. All the talk of Jackson leaving the Ravens this offseason was just that. Talk as the two sides hammered out a deal that made the highest paid player in the NFL. And why would they want to separate? When he has the ball in his hands, great things typically happen. Off the play fake, here's Jackson. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. Well, you know, paramount for this defense is trying to keep Lamar Jackson somewhat contained when he tries to run. They did a pretty good job of it there. And you know what's so difficult for every defense that has to prepare for Lamar Jackson? You have to think and play at the same time. And I know that sounds like something you're supposed to do, but when you have to think about your assignments against him, it often slows down your feet. You don't move as fast. You've got to be prepared for this guy every step of the way and then try and match his athleticism. Barney, you know when we call a game, we talk about Lamar Jackson and his speed, his elusiveness, and the ability to get him on the ground, how tough that is for a defense. But how about his development as a thrower, as a professional? And they'll let the quarterback keep it here on first and 10. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. Well, they had a gain of 10 last time, now a gain of 20 here. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 42-yard line. First carry now for Gus Edwards. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. Second and five. Off the option, here's Edwards. Five yards on first down, but now just a one-yard pickup there on second. Third and three. Now it's Jackson. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. Yeah, this is caught. Touchdown, Baltimore. 
Rashad Bateman, 35 yards. And the Ravens get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. Not a bad way to start it. And I think that that was part of their script because so many teams script their opening possessions. And, and whether it's just that possession or even deeper into the half, sometimes it's 15 to 30 plays. That had to be one in there where they call a shot play. Go for the big one, and they got it done. Tucker with the extra point, and that makes the score 7-0. A drive that time of six plays. And it's Rashad Bateman who finished it all off with a touchdown. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And it'll come out to the 25. Austin not going to try and return it. The Steelers offense set for their first possession here, and it's Kenny Pickett who will lead the way, the second-year man, Charles, from Pitt. Pickett didn't quite lead Pittsburgh to the promised land in his first season as the hometown kid and franchise quarterback, but he did impress once he got on the field. Winning seven games helped keep the vaunted streak of non-losing seasons alive in the Steel City. Pickett leads his Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs at their own 25-yard line. Now Pickett. That's caught, Allen Robinson. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Pick it, he'll look to throw it. Oh, and that is incomplete. Not a great start dropping his first target, but let's face it, it won't be his last chance because he'll get opportunities to make up for that one throughout this game. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Pick it back to throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I know at the end of games, coaches always tell us that no one play won or lost a game. But this seems pretty important early, doesn't it? Their, their ability to pick up that first down on third down, I thought that was key. Well, you're already in the hole after the touchdown on the other side. How will you respond? We talk about that a lot. And they responded pretty well there. You go three and out, I think you give up a lot of momentum. You get down two scores, could be an entirely different game. So they've got a nice drive going now. They're in good shape. What's interesting to me is they're also in that spot of the field where you would take a shot. Do you change that up just because you're down a touchdown? Now, that's a mountain of a man that just made that stop, isn't it? But he's more than that. This guy is nimble and quick. More than a space eater, he just made a great play there. Pick it. Setting up the screen, Harris. They showed off a nice juke of the defender before the next wave could bring him down. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. And that doesn't have to gain big yardage. It should be an impactful play because if you can get those pass rushers second-guessing themselves that they might get hit with a screen, maybe you can wind up slowing them down just a step. And if you do that, that's a win for that play. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he will have the Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. We got to like what you're seeing from this offense here on the first drive. A nice sustained series to begin the game that will continue after picking up another first there. Would you say the word methodical comes to mind? I love the execution. I love what they're doing on this drive. They're controlling the ball, controlling the game, controlling the clock. A run there on first down and a pretty good one at five yards, so make it second and five. It's not a huge breakaway run, but if your starting running back finishes the game, 
with averages of five or six yards per touch, you'll take that every single time. Counting down toward the midway point in corner one. Pick it now to throw off the play fake. He's got his man downfield. It's Robinson. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10 yard line. Now it looks like we're going to get a stoppage here. An injured Steeler on that last play. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. First and goal, and a chance to get that initial touchdown right back. Pickett going to bootleg it. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. Nice job defensively to hold him to four, and now it's second and goal. The tight end in motion right. On second down, this is Harris. And he's going to take it in for a Steeler touchdown. Najee Harris, a six-yard touchdown run. And the Steelers respond to that opening drive touchdown with one of their own. So, partner, it was a passing game that drove them down the field, but when they get close, they trust that man in the backfield, and he took them home. And they trust their offensive line as well because so many of these units... They specialize in either pass protection or run blocking. This group shows his versatility and gets both done on this drive. Oswell good with the extra point, and we are tied at seven. Each team's had it. Each team has scored 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. And this taken in at the goal line. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. Baltimore's set to take over here for their second possession of the game. As this offense takes the field again, it's been a while since they've been out there. We just saw that long touchdown drive by the opposition. But remember, when this crew was out here last, Charles, they scored as well. And let's make sure we give both offensive staff some credit, and especially the offensive coordinators, because we spoke with both of them in the lead-up to this game, and both were really confident in their game plans. They felt like they had scouted their opponents and focused on specific areas in practice this week to make sure that they were ready to go. And frankly, it looks like they both did an excellent job. Yeah, we'll see if those game plans... And that's caught inside the 35! Andrews, 74 yards, and the Ravens have taken the lead. Seeing some pretty good offense here in this first quarter. It's been a wild start to this quarter, as you noted, and now with that lead that we're seeing, can they retaliate? I get the sense this one's going to go back and forth all game long. And that probably won't be the last long touchdown that we see in this one. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and that makes the score 14 to seven. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And it'll come out to the 25. Austin not going to try and return it. So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession. And they'll be looking to build off of a nice drive last time, a drive that really relied 
on the quarterback. Making good decisions, distributing the ball well, distributing it accurately, keeping it away from danger. A really nicely run drive. But now the defense, what adjustments do they need to make in the passing game? Pass rush, pass rush, pass <laughs> rush. Whether it's the guys huh? up front, or maybe you bring additional guys, but you've got to disrupt the timing of them throwing the yeah, football. We'll see if they can disrupt it here. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play, right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense if that fell harmlessly to the ground. Back to throw, pick it. And he goes down. The Ravens able to get to him. A well-designed corner blitz that gets him for a loss of eight yards. Now Charles dealing with a third and long. They'll have to try to go back to the air again, and this time avoid the sack. Certainly hard to try to establish momentum when all you're doing is going backwards, not protecting the passer, and he gets dumped on his backside. Pick it in the Steelers in need of a big play here. Third and long after the sack. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds, incomplete. And this is what you want to see from a defense. Give up an opening drive touchdown, that's fine. But how about them going back out there, recommitting themselves to the task at hand, and forcing a three and out, and giving the ball back to their offense. On fourth down, here's Presley Harvin on to punt. Fair catch taken just inside the 40-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Ravens, they'll take over. And Baltimore's offense set for this next possession. Well, partner, you know, coaches always say that every play is designed to score a touchdown. Sometimes that's not really true, but last drive, that was the case. One play to get into the end zone, and now they'll try to duplicate that success here. And it's rare for those moments to happen. Incredible when they do. And you saw the celebration. Pure, unbridled joy after that one. Completes it to Aguilar. So give him two yards there on the completion, and it's second down. Now it's Jackson. A short throw caught by Andrews. His second catch, and this one not nearly as electrifying as his first. And it'll bring up third down now. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. 23 yards, the final tally. I have to imagine many a defensive coordinators had a sleepless night trying to game plan ways to slow down Lamar Jackson. What do you think is the most effective way to try to do it? But well, you've got to be a little counterintuitive because normally you're sitting on the wide receiver one, aren't you? But with Lamar Jackson, I'd sit on the tight end. He loves to throw into the middle of the field, loves that position as his number one target. Take that away and hope you have a corner who can stand up man-to-man -man against his speed guy on the perimeter. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. It went with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field have covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. Second and 10. Jackson now. Going for Bateman. He's got him on the out route. And down inside the 15 he goes. A busy first quarter. His third catch of the afternoon is a first down. And 
Jackson throwing once more. And in for the Ravens touchdown. Lamar Jackson hooking up with Mark Andrews. And the Ravens go up by two touchdowns. Well, just a sensational start for this offense, Charles. Three drives, three passing touchdowns. Is that like mentioning a perfect game in baseball? Or are we cool to do it here in football, partner? No, I think you can do it here in football. I think perfect game in baseball, that, that's its own category. Yeah, I think you're right about that. Could not imagine a worse start for that secondary, or let's face it, a better one for this offense. No chance they stop passing now the way that it's going. I think they're gonna continue to press the ball downfield and hopefully reap the same results. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And it'll come out to the 25. Austin not going to try and return it. The Steelers offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. Pickett leads the Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs at their 25-yard line. Off play action, Pickett. And his throw's gonna be incomplete. Timing's crucial in any route thrown, but when you throw an out, so many things are going through the mind of the receiver. Catching the ball, timing it up with the quarterback. Are my feet going to get down inbounds? On that play, all those things going through his head might have caused him to drop it. And the slot man goes in motion left. Now they fake the jet sweep there and a run instead with Harris. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. Throwing on third down. Here's Pickett. That's complete to his tight end fire move. And he's going to be stopped here a few yards short of the first as the tackle is made at the 33. That'll give him eight that time. And that'll bring up fourth down. I thought maybe when he caught, he'd have a good chance of getting that first down. But that's a nice job of holding him up and preventing him from getting to the sticks. On his Presley Harvin now as he'll send this one away. Fielded at about the 28. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt. And they will take over first and 10. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. Right now, everything they touch turns to gold. This is their fourth possession. Touchdowns on their first three possessions. I mean, this defense, they can't seem to stop them. It's like they're on skates. Great analogy, Brandon, because they are pushing them back and winning everything at the line of scrimmage. They've just been laying down tracks towards the opposite end zone. So to themselves, all they're saying is, if we don't make a mistake, there's no way they can stop us. The quick feet by Jackson. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive. First down. First play of the drive. Excellent run. Just sets up wash, rinse, repeat. Another first down. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and 10. Jackson. Throw caught by Flowers. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and it's second down. Slam route's effective no matter who's running the route and catching the ball. But when you have a receiver of that stature, you have to be a little bit more precise throwing it. You don't have the same catch radius with the bigger targets. From the 48-yard line, here's second down and five. Beckham goes in motion left. Now Jackson taps his forward jet sweep, and he will possibly get back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. On the other hand, it will definitely take us to the end of the first quarter of play. A pretty wild first quarter. 21-7, our score. 
Raven football here as we begin quarter number two as they've got it with a third down coming up. Here's Jackson. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he will have a Ravens first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, this might very well have been four down territory, but that's not going to matter now. They get a nice throw there on third down, and they're able to keep the drive going. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Jackson going to give this one to Edwards. Oh, that's just not fair. And now room to run. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. Good yardage as he rumbles for 24 and a first. We both know it's difficult, but they've made it look effortless out there. Through the air, on the ground, they've moved the ball with relative ease. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. They run once more with Edwards. And he'll get about three just outside the 10, stopped at the 11. Taken down at the 11 yard line. It's a pick up of three. Brings up second and seven. Here's second and seven. Now Jackson. And his throw here is incomplete. Everything about that play tells you about today's NFL offenses and what they're asking out of running backs. You can't just be a guy who can run the football. You have to be able to catch it as well. And he didn't get that done on that play. The Ravens on third down. A perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. This is third and seven. To throw is Jackson. And that'll be taken in by Andrews for a Ravens touchdown. A great play there. On his way to a monster game, three first-half touchdowns. And the Ravens take a three-touchdown lead. So not only is that his third touchdown catch of the game, he's done it here in the first half. I'm not sure defensively what they're going to come up with to slow him down because already we're seeing him run past, over, through guys in order to make these catches. And being able to try and shut him down at this stage of the game, it's going to take a lot of effort. So maybe it'll open things up for some other people. Well, they better figure something out and soon. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And it'll come out to the 25. Austin not going to try and return it. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. They're down three touchdowns to this point, needing to put something together as they have it first and 10. Pickett sets up play action. Here's one deep for Pickens. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. And attempted a deep ball there, and they didn't get it. But boy, they're going to need a few of those to actually hit in order to get back into this game. Good thing they do have a little bit of time here still left in the contest. Decent sized deficit, but not one that they can't manage. Second down, here's Pickett. It's brought in by Harris. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Pittsburgh getting 16 yards there and also a first down. It's been a very one-sided game so far. They got to change what they're doing right now, don't they? You can't wait till the halftime speech to make an adjustment. No, you can't, because if you're doing it right, you're adjusting from series to series, and they need a big adjustment here to try and put some points on the board. 
Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. He's got to throw it better, got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught, they've got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. There's a ball thrown right side and complete. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens' 38-yard line. A gain there of 21 yards. And I don't think there's any question that this offense is going to need to hit on a few more plays like this. It's been a difficult first half for them, to say the least. And I do believe if they want to get back in this game, they need to start right now. It's kind of like making adjustments. If you try and wait until the half, it's probably too late. They need to get going right here. Dialing up another pass here. Pickett across the middle. He finds Robinson and brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Now a first down carry for Harris. Getting in there for the tackle, Marcus Williams. Now second and five. Pick it. He'll look to throw it. And that is incomplete. Nearly intercepted. The free safety couldn't quite get his hands around it, and it brings up third down. When I watched that play, I thought about what my coaches had told me in the past, the biggest teaching point. Get your head around. Locate the football so you can make a play on it while it's in the air. That's exactly what he did there. That was nice. Pick it now from the gun here. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And the Steelers are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. A very important third down conversion right there because when you're trailing and find yourself this deep in enemy territory, the kicker's not even part of your thought process. you got to make it pay off with six. Nice connection right there to set up first and goal. Harris, touchdown, Pittsburgh. So his strong first half continues as he finds the end zone here for the second time. And definitely good blocking at the point of attack, and you just have to love watching the way he can create space down near the goal line, and he's able to take it into the end zone. Boswell for the extra point. It's up and good, and it's now 28 to 14. So a nice drive put together there. They go 75 yards in nine plays. And it was Najee Harris who finished it off with a touchdown run. Touchdown. On the return, Devin Duvernay. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. Baltimore about ready to go on offense. And a lot of time for this unit to game plan on the sideline after that drive that they watched the other side just score. But remember, last time they were out, they scored as well. We'll see if they can seize that momentum right back. And they have had a lot of time to cool off from reaching the end zone the last time. So have they been able to keep themselves mentally sharp and into this game, even though they haven't been on the field? And you and I both know, one big play, though, gets them right back up to that level. On first and 10, it's Jackson. To the right side, into the hands of Flowers. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. 
Snap will come from the 31 on second and seven. Jackson options out left. The quick feet by Jackson. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. A big time gain there on the keeper using his legs to hurt him. First down. Again, Jackson will keep it. And a very determined run there as he'll take this all the way down to the 27. Good effort. This game not quite as good as the last, but still over 40 yards between the two. They go play action now. Jackson. That is caught, Rashad Bateman. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. But he's turning in a nice performance. Remember, he had the touchdown earlier, and this time he's able to beat double coverage to grab it. I think that if he weren't worried about a taunting penalty, he'd run by the opposing team's bench and say, guys, two's not going to be enough. You better get some more guys trying to cover me. He knows how to get open downfield. The tackle made by Levi Wallace. Second and six. No, scratch that. Second and seven. Jackson going to keep it running right. And he can't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. It's a good gain of 11. Sets him up first and goal. A lot to praise on this drive, obviously. I, I know you're seeing what I'm seeing. Those guys up front, they're getting it done. Doesn't matter what play is called. They are handling their business in the line of scrimmage and dominating right now on this drive. Hill will take this into the end zone. It's a Ravens touchdown. Sometimes offensive can get too cute down near the goal line, but there's nothing fancy about this one. As Coach Lombardi would say, we get a seal here, and we get a seal here, and we run this play in the alley. And that's good work to hit the hole hard and finish in the end zone. Tucker with the extra point, and the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. Austin elects to bring this out of the end zone. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. Now the Steelers offense gets ready to get back onto the field. A strong showing their last time out. They scored the touchdown, but Charles, they look up and they're still down double digits. So you feel like just to keep pace, this drive probably needs to end in the end zone as well. Yeah, and I think the best move for them is to not worry about how far they are down on the scoreboard, but to just remember the last drive and how it ended. Go ahead and try and repeat that. Then you can look at the scoreboard and see where this game is. On first and 10, it's Pickett. And his throw is incomplete. That was a classic example of trying to run with the ball without securing the catch. He was thinking about those rack yards instead of making the catch first and then taking off. Here's second and 10. Back to throw, pick it. That to the right sideline, and it falls incomplete. He did an okay job of absorbing the hit, just couldn't secure the football through the catch. 
And he was right there on the spot and forced the incompletion. That's something defenders work on all the time. If you're there, make the contact, but continue to work your way through the receiver so that he can't possess the football and turn it into a catch. Pick it back to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. On third and 10, they go flying past the marker and get nearly 40 yards. I don't care what level of football you play. This one was a universal, wasn't it? When we were kids and we played touch football, remember we get in these positions and you just say, everybody go along and hope someone would come free. So the big play moves them all the way across midfield. It's first and 10 from the 45. Pickett. That swung out wide to Harris. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And it'll be second down. Pick it'll look to throw it here. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And it's picked up by the Ravens. And they will set up shop in enemy territory at the 42-yard line. And a defensive-minded coach loves to turn up the heat, turns it up there, it pays off. And back in the good old days, those defensive-minded coaches just talked about intimidating teams, using force, right, beating them to the punch. In this case, they're talking about creating turnovers. That's all they preach, all game long, all practice long, every meeting, get the football. That's what they want. Edwards now on first and 10. And very little there. He might have gotten a yard. Yeah, I think he got a yard to the 41. Now a pause, and there's an injured Raven in need of some assistance. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. And we're at the 41, second and nine. Jackson, option right. The there he goes, right side. And he's going to take this all the way down to the Steelers' eight. A big-time gain there on the keeper, using his legs to hurt him. First down. So this play, you know, until recently, only something you'd probably expect to see in a college game, but running quarterbacks are certainly in vogue, and this turned into a big play. And you and I both know that for a long time, coaches worried about their quarterbacks taking too much punishment running plays like this, and they still worry about it. But when you can break off big chunks of yardage like that, it's worth the risk, plus you're coaching that quarterback to see those guys coming and get down before the big hit occurs. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. Jackson going to run. And he's going to get this back to the three-yard line and no further. Call it no gain on the keeper, and it's going to bring up a third down. Well, for that being an option play, there really weren't too many options available for him, were there? No, there weren't, and at least he was able to get back to the line of scrimmage, so they didn't lose anything, but you're exactly right. Nowhere to go. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. A chance to really put this game out of reach. Here's third and goal. Here's Jackson to throw toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. When you run in the slant, timing is everything. And against that man coverage, there was no space available and incompletion as a result. So Jackson will head to the Ravens' sideline, and on comes Justin Tucker for the field goal try. From the right hash at a bit of a tight angle. 
Tucker's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So they wind up turning the turnover into points as they convert there for three. Yeah, that was a nice job there to force the fumble. They recover, hand things over to their offense, and then the offense went down and got them three. That alone, that's not enough to win a game, but both units able to do their jobs on these last two drives. Tucker now following the main field goal, set to kick it away. Austin elects to bring this out of the end zone. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. Right now they're on the wrong end of the scoreboard, and that won't change if this drive ends like the last one when they had that lost fumble. So you have a feeling taking care of the football is certainly paramount right now. Yeah, and it's not just the guy who dropped it on the last drive, is it? That means everyone who might touch the ball is getting the same message. Guys, ball security, paramount. Let's take care of it. And if we do, we've got a chance to put points on the board. First and 10, here's Pickett. Man open is Robinson. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. The catch and run going to wind up netting him 33 yards. I think it's pretty safe to say that initially, they had to be thinking about trying to get into field goal range. But after that shot right there, they've got to be thinking bigger right now. And that was probably their thought offensively. If we hit this, great. Let's go for the end zone. If not, settle for a field goal. Looks like they can try to hit Bader. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about, and you can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent, and that allows you to make a play on it and oftentimes knock it away. Here's Pickett. And that's going to be too high, out of bounds and incomplete. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they didn't completions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. They'll throw again with Pickett. That is caught. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens 34 yard line. 12 yards that time at a Pittsburgh first. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Now pick it. Incomplete. Nice progress down the field was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again, or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. Looking to throw, pick it. The throw out wide going to be incomplete. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Pick it right back to the air again. Able to find the open man. That's complete. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Pick it now on first down. And that's too tall for his receiver. It's incomplete. George Pickens, his intended receiver there. And now it's second down. Back to throw again. 
And he drops it incomplete. And their struggles continue here. This drive, which was going so smoothly, all of a sudden it's a little bit of a roadblock here with two straight incompletions. Yeah, apparently this defense has had enough. Apparently they're saying no more. We're speaking a stand right here, right now. But it is third and ten. They've got to get after him one more time. Pick it. He's going to throw it again. Ball oh, had his hands on it. Couldn't bring it in. Pretty symptomatic of how this game's been going. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There was pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him, and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion. Boswell's kick is good, and they get a little bit closer here as the lead's down to three touchdowns. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three, or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone, get you six? After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. And the Ravens going to get one more drive here in this first half. And with a three-score lead already, this is not time for a momentum change, so I'd imagine they'd be happy to just take this into the locker room. A little over 20 seconds remaining in the half as they'll line up here first and 10. And they're just going to run it here up the middle. And an anxious moment or two there, but they do get him down. It's a pickup of 11 and a Baltimore first down. So we have reached halftime here with the visiting Ravens out in front. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports Halftime Report. This was an extremely one-sided first half. One team showed up ready to go. The other's been in a daze thus far but there's still plenty of time left for this one to tighten up significantly. All right, coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Steelers going to get the football first here, trailing on the scoreboard as we are back underway on EA Sports. Austin elects to bring this out of the end zone, and he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. Now Allen Robinson and company gearing up to go again on offense. Let's see here, Charles. Six catches, over 100 yards. Call that a pretty good day at the office. And I love the accumulation, the catches, the yardage, that means he's having a pretty good impact on this ball game and really helping his team out in a big way. Means he wants the football again, right? And it's funny because some of these receivers are very vocal about how much they're getting it. Others are quieter, but they still let you know, give me the ball, I'm going to make a play. Yeah, boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. Second and 10 at the 19-yard line. 
So after the run for no gain, here's second and 10. Back to throw. Pick it. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Robinson. And he'll go out near midfield at the 49. A gain there of 30 big ones. Well, they've got to remember that they're not going to get it all back on one drive. But that being said, they also had to come out here in the third quarter with a sense of urgency and playmaking ability. And they showed it on that last play. The big play has them all the way out near midfield for a first and 10. Off play action, pick it. And that one gonna come up short, low throw. He released that awkwardly. It almost looked like a pitcher who gripped his fastball a little too hard and let it go late and it bounced in front of the plate. Yeah, one of those fastballs that ends up at 57 feet, not 60 feet, six inches. Just a little short with the arm, which is unusual because we saw him in warmups. He's got a big, strong arm when he delivers it with confidence. A run with Harris out of the shotgun. And across midfield he goes into Raven territory. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. That ground game contained again there, Charles, and that's really a big reason that they're trailing right now. And give a lot of credit to that defensive front. That's exactly what they worked for all week to try and take away the run game, make them one-dimensional in the battle of game plans. Theirs has been superior. And oh, he's just going to be short here, barely. Maybe by a half a foot. It'll be fourth and inches. Well, so far, this game has gone the way the defensive coordinator had hoped. They've dictated things. They've not let them run the ball very well at all. It gave up a nice game there. I doubt it'll back off their confidence. They've played so well throughout this entire game. Still just the third quarter, but they've got to make something happen. I think they know that. They're going for it on fourth. They're going for it. This is Harris. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. Just a gain of three, but they'll certainly take it as they convert on fourth down. Fourth and inches in plus territory. That seemed like a prime spot to go for it. It certainly did, and there's so many things that go into it. Are you too far away for a field goal, but not far away to punt it? Do you just feel like your offense is better? I just think in today's NFL, Offense feels like it has to take care of the football, has to keep the ball, because scoring is up. You better maximize every possession. You trust your offense more than you trust your defense in today's league. My first thought is surprise, because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? Now a second and 10. From the gun, here's Pickett. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. And partner to me, that one was all about timing. If he's there too early, it's going to be a pass interference call. If he's too late, it's a completed pass. He was Johnny on the spot on that one. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have him looking at third and ten. Pick it now to throw off the play fake. And the Raven pressure too much. Down he goes. Sacked there by Jadevian Clowney. We've watched this a long time, and I still don't believe we get it. Third and long, why are you calling play action? Yeah, because they're not going to bite defensively, right? No, not at all. I did have a coach explain to me years ago that for some teams, that's how they have to deal with pass protection and their line blocking. But to me, it seems silly. Yeah, well, they're silly, and it leads to a play action sack. And problems spreading to the punt team now. This one goes all the way into the end zone on the fly, so that'll come back to the 20. The Ravens offense getting ready now for their first possession of the second half. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. His throw incomplete. Well, the secondary's really struggled today, but that's a little bit of a measure of revenge, isn't it? And they just followed the basic rules. See ball, knock ball away. Turns into a nice play. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Jackson now. That one into the hands of Flowers. 
And he showed off the athletic juke. Good little gain there. Not a whole lot of real estate, but a nice carry. Here's third and a few inches. They'll try and run for the first with Edwards. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Four yards on the pickup, good enough to extend the drive. And this is beginning to border on dominance. Another strong run that picks up a first down. You've got to wonder if the defense coordinator is wondering, do I even go to goal line defense in any situation now to try and slow down this running game? They run the option here on first and 10. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. No gain there as he kept it himself at second down. Jackson throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. An incomplete pass on second down. It muddles things a little bit here. This is third and ten. Throwing is Jackson. Pressure comes and down he goes. There's your co-NFL record holder, T.J. Watt, doing what he does best, terrorizing quarterbacks. At that time, finally a measure of revenge as they get him down behind the line. It almost felt like relief, didn't it? Because with the success he's had throughout this game, you'd almost expect him to get free and pick up 10 to 15 every time he takes off. Not in that case, that has to feel good for the defense. The Ravens send their punter out now. And the way this offense has moved the ball, he hasn't been needed till here in the third. Here's Austin. They'll score that a 36-yard punt. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. George Pickens, the intended target, but it's going to be second down. on the toss here to Harris. And a gain of four gets him right to the midfield stripe. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get him into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Able to find his man, it's Pickens. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. That'll put him at 66 receiving yards now for the game, and he's got a first down. Partner, this is one of the best routes anyone can have in their offensive playbook. Tough to defend because you think it's a go route, and then he breaks it back on the comeback. But there's one other thing you need as well. A well-thrown ball. Exactly right. You have a guy who has some precision in throwing the football because of the timing of the route. Harris running straight ahead. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. 41 yards rushing for him now with a couple of touchdown runs to boot. Ball on the 27. Here's a second and four. He'll get it inside the 20, and he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens' 17-yard line. It's a 10-yard pickup, and that's enough to move the chains. 
Was that a design pass or what was that? It was built into the play call. He had the opportunity to either hand it inside, keep it himself to run it, or do what he just did. Throw that pass inside, hitting a receiver on the run. Slant round, and he's got fire move. And the Steelers are going to have a first and goal coming up as the tackle made at the three-yard line. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. They'll try to run with Harris. And he's in. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Najee Harris, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Steelers are able to cut into that deficit. What a game it's been for him in the backfield, Charles, as he pounds it into the end zone yet again. Yeah, and he hits the end zone one more time, and his blockers cleared all those lanes. Before the snap, they called for the heavy unit, right? Three tight ends coming on the field, and they got the job done clearing the way. Extra point put through by Boswell, and the lead will be cut down to 14. well now to kick it away after the touchdown. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. Their lead down from 21 to 14, but still sitting in a great spot. Up two scores here in the third quarter. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 right at the 30. On the ground with Hill to begin the drive. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. Alex Highsmith there on the tackle. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. A second and ten forthcoming here. Third quarter action in the Steel City of Pittsburgh, PA. On the option right is Jackson. Looking for a seam but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage and that's it. Call it no gain on the keeper and it's going to bring up a third down. Now the terrible towels in full force now as the Steelers get set to defend this third and long. On third down, Jackson. Uh, he had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. And sensing the momentum may be changing here a little bit, Charles. Yeah, this defense is going to get off the field quickly, and their offense got him a touchdown last time they had the ball, so they should get another shot. The Ravens send their punter out now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And a fair catch signaled for and taken just outside the 20-yard line. The Steelers ready for their next possession. Right now, Charles, it just feels like they're trying to keep pace. They did score the touchdown last time out, but they still trail by double digits here. We'll see if this offense is once again up to the task. Yeah, and I think that after the last drive, they've got them pretty revved up, don't you think? Everything they were doing was working pretty well. They go back out there with the same mindset, play at the same tempo and the same pace. Still a lot of time left to make something happen in this one. Off the play fake, here's Pickett. Eluding the pressure right. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. I certainly like what he did right there because he smartly wanted to avoid forcing anything downfield because nothing appeared to be open. Nice harmless slide there to avoid the big hit, and he gets a small gain on the play. 
Pickett back to throw. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Drag at the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. A really nice gain of 25 yards. But one of the ways that quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field, and here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. John Harbaugh never shy about bringing out the red challenge flag, and he'll do so here. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I, I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. After review of the play, the ruling on the field stands. So the challenge there does not go their way. This will indeed remain a completed pass. Pick it to throw on first down. A throw left side caught by the tight end fire move. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. Two chunk plays in a row. The last one was over 20 yards, and so is this one. That was good protection there. No, that was great protection there because it allowed him to lock in on his receiver. Although I think he was looking for his tight end on the corner route all the way. Nice connection there for a really nice gain. He's going to go up top for the end zone. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Dialing up another pass here. Pick it. A uh, short one there to Fryermuth. That helps the completion percentage, but not much else. And now it's third and ten. That was a nice throw out there to the flat, but they defended that pretty well. The hope is to go ahead and put it on him so he can turn and get upfield and gain additional yardage. It just wasn't anywhere to go on that play. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Pick it now from the gun here. open but he couldn't get it to him it's incomplete well how about the coverage we just saw break out on third down dime defense blanketed the field with extra defensive backs and speed unable to find an open hole to complete that pass boswell's kick is good and that will get the disadvantage now back down to 11. So a good kick there to polish off the drive with three points. Yeah, coaches always talk about finishing a drive with a kick. Two of them give you points, either an extra point, or in this case, a field goal. successful field goal try here's Boswell to send it away and beyond the 20 but not by much in fact just a yard pass there to the 21 and Baltimore's offense set for this next possession they've got to right the ship they had a great first half but the lead has really gone down now you know you always talk about the adjustment to the adjustment they've got to adjust right here and I think a lot of it is just mentally. Get back to doing what you were doing well in the beginning of the game, but a lot of that is playing with that emotion and that sense of pride and fire that sometimes goes away a little bit when you build up the lead. You think you've got it going, and you also think at any moment I can go ahead and go back to the way it was before. You and I both know it's not that easy once you get off the gas a little. Yeah, they don't want to see this lead diminish anymore. From the 21, it's second and 10. 
Out of the gun, they give to Edwards. And he's brought down at the 24 after a gain of four. Well, partner, they've been running it well the entire game, and the big guys up front, they're a huge reason why. And now they're reaping the benefits as they continue to open up big holes and gain nice yardage. Third down at six. Jackson. And that is incomplete. Coverage was awfully tight there on third down. They actually closed off all the passing lanes, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. The Ravens send their punter out now as he's on here to punt it away. Fair catch called for and made at about the 32-yard line. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return, and it will be first and 10 as they take over. Pickett leads his Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs at the 33-yard line. Working out of the gun, it's Pickett. Goes to his man on the outbound. It's complete. That's Robinson. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. And that last reception puts him over 150 yards now on the game, Charles. And now it's not just execution. It's not just performance. It's a mental aspect that's going on. Because right now, he's got the defense so much on their heels. Got them looking at each other. Who's going to cover this guy? And what type of coverage can we put out there to try and slow him down? Meanwhile, Pickett's throw pulled in by Robinson here. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Pittsburgh. It's the Steelers with the football, but trailing here as we get going in quarter number four. Back to throw, pick it. Over the middle, it's complete. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone, or? Better against man, because now you're running away from someone, and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. First and 10, here's Pickett. A short one there to Fryermuth. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch, and that will bring up second down. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. From the 29, here's second and five. They'll throw again with Pickett. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. Normally, being a big-bodied receiver plays to their advantage downfield. Go up and make the catch, take the hit, and pick up yardage. But in this case, the hit was timed really well and popped it free from his grasp. Now pick it. He's going to take a shot for the end zone. Toward the back corner of the end zone, but he could not get the feet down. This will wind up incomplete. And they're at the point of the ball game now where they've got to take some chances. They've got to put the ball in the air and just see what happens. But this defense knows that all too well. So Pickett is off to the sideline, and Chris Boswell is on for the Steeler field goal try. From the right hash, it's a 46-yard attempt. Boswell's kick is good, and that'll make this an eight-point game. So a good kick there to polish off the drive with three points. Yeah, coaches always talk about finishing a drive with a kick. Two of them give you points, either an extra point, or in this case, a field goal. Yeah, 
after the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. Devin Duvernay now returning from the end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. The Ravens offense back out there. Their lead back down to one score after the field goal a moment ago, so they'll be looking to string together a few first downs, likely on the ground as they begin first and ten. The drive starts with a carry by Edwards. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. That good for 22 and a first down. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. That's Larry Ogunjobi powering through to end that play before it could get started. If this was boxing, you think maybe they would have thought about stopping this one because this defense has been bruised, it's been battered, but this is why they keep the fight going, right? They just got done with a really nice play, showing they still got a little bit left, don't they? Haven't had many plays that they can clip, put in the film room and smile about, but hey, there's one. Clip and save. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. Anytime a ball's thrown in the middle of the field, it's popped up in the air. I expect someone to catch. It doesn't matter whether it's offense or defense because there's usually a great amount of bodies in that part of the field. In this case, no one came up with it. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And a throw there going to be incomplete. That is certainly one way to frustrate a quarterback. One of those extra defenders on the field. Dime package, lots of speed. No space to fit in the football. The Ravens send their punter out now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Fair catch called for right around the 11-yard line. And now out come the Steelers. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. To the air on first down with Pickett. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. When you see passes knocked down by those guys I call the frustrated fullbacks, the linebackers, you know that in their zone coverage, they were able to drop, see the ball thrown, and react to it very quickly. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. On the give, this is Harris. And some room to maneuver. There he goes again. And he is finally brought down at the Ravens' 36-yard line. A big play that time for Pittsburgh. 52 yards. Nothing fancy there. A little smash mouth football right up the gut on the dive, and it turns into a huge play. You talk about the fastest way to the secondary. Right up the gut, as you described, and sprinted into the secondary for a long, long run. So how about this for a change in field position? From inside the 10, here's first down on the other side of the field. to the sideline and that is a heck of a catch as he was able to get both feet in a very solid gain of 27 and that's a much needed first down right there look they're down by eight so logic says they don't have to get a touchdown out of this drive but the way things are going i don't know if i'd put it in the hands of my defense here you might not get the ball back at all so if a fourth down situation comes up i'm thinking hard about going for it right here and right now Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Another shot from the nine on second and goal. Here's Pickett. 
He's got his man in stride, complete. And in for the Steelers, touchdown. Connor Hayward, a nine-yard touchdown grab. And the Steelers have a chance to tie things up as they trail by two here in the fourth. So part one of what they needed is done. They get in the end zone. Now you have to imagine we'll see a try for two. And that's what the book says, but defensively, they can't hang their head right here. They still got a chance to come out with the lead if they make a play. Pickett will try to throw for this. And this went incomplete. So they went for the two, they don't get it. So unable to throw it in for two from the two. Let me ask you, as a former DB, what changes there around the goal line on a two-point conversion as far as how you're defending? You just make sure you never back up and you never retreat. You establish yourself really on the line of scrimmage. Put your heels on the goal line at worst. And if they're going to throw the ball, make them throw it over your head because they're going to run out of space because of the back of the end zone. Never let a guy catch one in front of you. well now to kick it away after the touchdown. Duvernay now going to bring it out. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. They've been asleep for a little while on this side of the football, Charles, and the score is just a one-score game now. Haven't had any points this half. What gives? Let's go old school here. All right, let's get back to the basics. Get back to running the football, high percentage throws. Find the guys that eat pressure and make plays for you and make sure they touch it. Jackson's throw complete there to Bateman. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. From the 31, here comes second and a yard. Jackson going to keep it running right. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. He has enough for the first down on the keeper, a gain of six. Well, that's the fear any defense has when the quarterback gets involved in the running game. You don't usually account for him, and he's hurting them today. Yeah, he's been very involved in the running game. Defensively, when you've got the coverage good downfield, how do you account for him, though? Occasionally, you start to spy him. Take someone that's the same agility, who can dance with him, run with him, and try and keep him in the pocket. Yeah, it'll be especially critical here as we come down the stretch in the fourth. Alex Highsmith simply would not be stopped on that play. Well, he's had success running the football on this one, and that's undeniable. But that time, the defense was on to it. And, partner, I think the more you see him play like this, the more they're able to diagnose it quicker and easier for them to defend it. I think you have to dress it up a little bit and show maybe some different formations and looks. But Jackson going to hold on to it again. And the ball closes quickly. He gets it across the 35 to the 36-yard line. They'll wind up getting three on the keeper there, but it leads to a third down. Now it's Jackson. for much more to this point in the second half a gorgeous day one score game first and ten here from the gun here's Pickett and he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes 
Jadavian Clowney able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. And this dominant defensive performance continued on that play. This poor quarterback has now received the protection he needs and has had to pick himself up off the turf far too often. This is Harris on the draw. And they won't fare much better here as he maybe gets back to the line. No gain on the play this time, and it'll be a third and long situation coming up. Delayed give there out of the gun. Defense was ready. Yeah, and I'm not a big fan of a draw play out of the shotgun formation because the quarterback's not having much action where he's getting away from the line of scrimmage. He's catching the football, making a little head fake, and then handing it off. You should be able to read it as they did there. And they're going to get him down well short of the first as he can only get this to about the 19. That'll bring up fourth down. They wind up getting eight yards, but they needed more than that. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. Do you like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion. And what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. And he'll take it just outside the 40. Baltimore about ready to go on offense. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10, just shy of midfield at the 48. They'll run with Edwards here to begin the drive. And he'll lose yardage here back at the 47. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. This defense starting to buckle down when they need to. Right now, they're winning this fourth quarter, losing the game, but they're winning in the fourth quarter. And what a fine line it is about what they're trying to get done because they're down, so they obviously need the football, need a score. But they can't be so aggressive as to give up their edge, their gaps, and have the offense hit him with a big play. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. And this is why the head coach gets paid the big bucks. Look at where they are in this situation, partner. Do you throw the ball here in a long-distance situation? Do you run it again and trust your defense and make sure you take care of the ball and punt it away? What kind of options do you have here, and what do you trust more on your team? Yeah, they may have just pushed him back into that throwing situation. We'll see. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. The Ravens send their punter out now as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. Calls for the fair catch, makes the fair catch just inside the 15-yard line. It'll wind up just a 35-yard punt, no return. And the Steelers are going to take over first and 10 deep in their own territory. Pick it now on first down. That's complete to his tight end final move. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. I got the sense that the defense created a little momentum for him there, didn't they? Did their job, forced the punt. Now, nice start to the drive. Offense has to do their part. Yeah, they certainly do, but what a great start for them. And they've got to go thank the guys on D. On first and ten, it's Pickett. Throwing right, and that's complete. And they'll wind up getting this to the 37. Gain of nine. So from the 37, here's second down and one. Pickett will look to throw it here. That's swung out wide to Harris. And a 42-yard line here and brought down there. That's a pretty favorable situation there. What would you call that second and manageable? Smart play, too. Didn't 
force it downfield when he didn't have it. Just checked it down, let him get the first down, and that's exactly what he did. All three timeouts plus the two-minute warning. Here's first and ten. They'll come up now. This is second and long. Here's Pickett. Setting up the screen, Harris. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Short game, short game last two plays. Who do you think's excited about that? Absolutely. This defense, they're saying go right ahead with O's. Here now, third down. Now Pickett. He's got Pickens complete. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as they stop it prior to what will be an important fourth down. Too far for a field goal. They've got to go. It's fourth down. Pick it. Fourth down. Desperation time. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's going to get out of bounds with the first down. So that's going to double their pleasure for sure. They get the first and save a timeout. Oh, man. They are living on the razor's edge. If this is incomplete, this game's over. Instead, it's a huge pickup. And I think the win percentage calculator has got to work overtime here because this game has really had some swings. Plenty of time and two timeouts still at their disposal. First and ten here. They hand this off to Harris. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here comes second down. Harris going to get it again on second down. And once again, they stop him behind the line. Great job by this Ravens defense. But Charles, they're trying to protect this lead late. Those are the types of mistakes they could afford to go without. About the last thing you want to give them is help in completing a comeback, which is exactly what that penalty does. Here's first and ten. Looking to throw here, pick it. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. Limited time left on the clock after that incompletion, so I think both sides are going to savor every second to prepare before the next snap. Because once the ball's in motion, it may be a non-stop push to finish this drive off. Everyone better be on the same page right now because I think they're going to try and get several plays off in quick succession if they can. And this carry, despite the good move, will be stopped short of the 10. Ravens going to use their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Boy, here's a big one. You can just feel it. This is third down now. On third down, here's Harris. And this won't do it. He needed six. He only got halfway there. The decision is to decline it and not give him the down back. They might as well have sent a skywriter above the stadium saying, we don't think you can get the first down against our defense by that decision. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. This for the lead in the final stages. Boswell's kick is good. And with a little over a minute to play, they have taken the lead. So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give them the lead. But 
this one's still certainly a long ways from over. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead, right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing? After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. On the return is Duvernay. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21. Jackson and the Ravens, here they come. Down by one, a little over a minute to go. Needing at least 40 yards, you'd have to think, to have a shot. Here's Jackson. Shoves him away. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. Here's second down and three. Jackson. Connecting with Andrews. And Andrews going to have a Ravens first down as he'll get this up past the 35-yard line. Brandon's okay with what they're doing right now. Still able to work the middle of the field, but you know sooner or later, they're going to have to stop the clock. Now this offense cannot stop the clock now. No timeouts remaining as they come up here first down. Jackson. Took a shot, couldn't connect. So after all of this, it comes down to one final play. And just think of what it's going to be, because from this distance, you've got to be prepared for everything. Hook and laterals, tip balls, you name it. A lot of laterals after a catch. Just got to be prepared, stay on your feet defensively, and tackle someone. He's going to let it fly. And it's incomplete, so their final drive comes up empty, and with that, the ball game is over. And a fun, close ball game comes to an end. On that last play, Charles, they were on the wrong side of midfield. They needed something near a miracle, and they couldn't get it done. Yeah, the effort, that was good. Very good, in fact. They were just a little too far out to get a decent look at the end zone for that last opportunity. Couldn't get it done, but a nice game overall.